All right, let's take a look at these. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly. So um, if I go too fast for you, then uh, watch watch a piece again if you need to. So anyway, um, I got a cube root here. Um, a good cube root to divide with is eight. Eight times three is 24. So perfect, this is a perfect cube. So that comes out as a two, leave some space. Put a cube root back with a three. All right, three goes into six twice, out. Three goes into 25, eight times. And there are uh, one left, so I don't have to put that one there. All right, so for the next one, um, addition. Addition, subtraction, those are the worst because these have to look exactly alike for you to be able to put them together. So I notice over here there's a two, and this is not gonna reduce. So I'm gonna see if this breaks down. 512 divided by two is um, 256 and two, right? So if I try on my calculator to do the fourth root of 256, let's see if this has a perfect um, answer. So put a four, press math, go down to the X root, 256. Oh, it's four. So this is gonna come out as a four, leave some space, put a two back, put my fourth root. All right, four goes into 10 twice with uh, two left. So over here, two is done, but four goes into 10. So twice and put my four back with my two and X two left over. All right, so now look, this matches this. I have four of them plus basically one of them. So I have five of them. I don't change what the them, the them is. So it's still x squared, fourth root of two x squared. Okay. Over here, um, multiplication. So multiply it. Um, I have six times one, so six, a big square root. That's gonna be 20, a to the ninth, and then b squared. I don't wanna have to keep reducing, reducing. I just wanna put it together and reduce one time. So 20, I'm gonna use four times five. So this comes out as a two. So it's going to be 12, leave some space, put my 5 back, uh, 2 goes into 9 4 times with 1 left, 2 goes into 2 once, and that's finished. Alright, um, down here, uh, again, subtraction, these need to match. Uh, 27 can be broken down to 9 and 3. 9 comes out as a 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so 9x, square root of 3x. Alright, so um, this needs to match if it's going to go together. So three is done. So my six is done, leave some space, my three is done. But this is a square root. Two goes into three one time with one left. And so look, they match. Nine of these minus six of these is three of those. Okay, that's kind of annoying. All right, so here, um, multiply, just like this one, multiply it. Negative 20, square root. 18 times 32 is 576, and then that's x squared, all right? So 18 times 32 is 576. Now, that's a big square root. Maybe I don't know that one. Let's check it. Square root of 576, oh, it's 24. I don't have to do any more work. So this is gonna come out as 24. Two goes into two one time, so 24x, that's the answer. So times negative 20. So um, that turns into negative 480x when I'm done. All right, letter F, I need to divide, all right? Don't try to reduce each one, you need to divide. So it's gonna be a fraction still, square root, square root. I'm just gonna do 72 divided by four. 72 divided by four is 18. All right, x5 and x2 means there's x3 here, I subtract. Three minus seven is negative four, so y to the fourth on the bottom. So now I work these out. The square root of y to the fourth is y squared. And then up here, I just have to work that problem out. 18 is nine times two, so I'm gonna bring out a three, leave some space, put a two back. Two goes into three one time with one left, and that's finished. All right, number two down here. Um, it's obviously, we're writing these as exponents, as uh, fractions. So a to the two sixths, uh, b to the three sixths, so that was one third and one half, so there. All right, evaluate this. There are gonna be some questions on your test that are like little simple things that you can't use your calculator for. So I'd rather do the cube root of 64 because I don't know what 64 squared is. So the cube root of 64 is four and I still have to square it, so that answer is easy, 16. All right, put this in exponent form. So let's check sixth root of 729. Um, put a six math and go down to the generic root and then there's 729. 
Okay, so three, so good, three. And then A would be 14 over six. Well, 14 over six reduces to seven over three. B, three over six reduces to one half. And C, 12 over six is two. All right, down here, number five, I'm gonna multiply this out. So I'm gonna distribute. So two radical three times six, two times six is 12, and radical three just sticks around. Minus these two. Two times five is 10, and radical three times radical three pops out of three. So I get 12 radical three minus 30. Over here, I got a foil. Here times here, so two, there's nothing there but a one, so two and the x pops out. And here, it's gonna give me 14, negative 14 radical x. The inside is gonna get me plus three radical x, and then minus 21. So this goes together and that's it, it's just ugly. Minus 11 radical x, oops and then minus 21. Okay, all right, over here, all numbers. So it's gonna be a little prettier. Five times five is 25. Five times three radical two would be plus 15 radical two. And inside would be negative 15 radical two. So that's gonna go away. And then here, the three and the three, that's negative nine, and the radical two radical two pops out of two. So these are gone, and I have 25 minus 18. So what's that, seven? Okay, rationalize. So multiply it by radical 2, radical 2. So this is 12 radical 2 over 2. The 2 and the 12 reduced down to 6. So 6 radical 2 is my final result. Um, in this problem, my index is that 3 right there. My exponent in this is 2, and my radicand is my x, my base. So like, you know, x to the 2 thirds. We do the power over the root. Power is an exponent, the root is the index, and the base is the radicand. All right. Okay, over here, um, I'm simplifying. So I'm just multiplying these together. I'm not writing them as radicals, I'm just multiplying it together. Eight times negative three is negative 24. My x's, when I multiply, I add. So I need to add two thirds plus one fifth. So my common denominator would be 15. So this multiplies by five, it gets me 10. This multiplies by three, it gets me three. So 13 fifteenths. If you don't know how to do that, you can put it in your calculator. All right, and my y, well, this is one and negative five. So one plus negative five is negative four. So it's gonna be a y negative four. So I think I'm gonna plan ahead and just put it on the bottom. And I don't have to rewrite it. All right, and anything to the zero power is one, done. All right, here. So this is like a pretty bad problem. I gotta do this three halves power, but I need to reduce this first. I don't wanna to touch the three halves power yet. Four and nine don't reduce, but look, two-fifths and four. I need to know what two-fifths minus four is. All right, so this is gonna be four over one, so I put a five, put a five, that multiplies by five, so 20. So that's gonna be negative 18 fifths. So I'm gonna to plan to put my x in the denominator. So x to the 18 over five. My y, I have a one and a one-third. So one minus one-third is two-thirds. So I think you can do that in your head. All right, so there's my reduction. My, um, it's reduced now, at least. So now I need to um, do my 3 halves power. Okay, so, whew, let's see. 4 to the 3 halves. So that's square root of 4, which is 2, and 2 to the 3rd is 8. Or it's 4 to the 3rd, which is 64. Square root of 64 is 8. 9. So 9 to the 3rd I don't want to do. So I'm going to do the square root of 9, which is 3, and 3 to the 3rd is 27. Now my exponents here, I have to multiply. So 2 thirds times 3 halves, they cancel out. So I get y to the one. You don't have to put that one. And then here I have 18 fifths times 3 halves. Ugh. 18 fifths times 3 halves. So that cancels to a nine. So I get 27 over five. So ugly, but really it's just exponent rules. All right, over here I'm gonna draw um, the inverse. So if that's four zero, I do 0, 4. If I do, um, this is 0, 2, so that's 2, 0, so I can tell it's kind of like coming down. If you want to do one more point, maybe a negative 6, 3, so 3, negative 6, so maybe I should have come over a little bit further, but that was the gist of it. Yeah, I don't really like that. All right, there you go. Whatever. Okay. 
Okay, find the inverse of this guy. So this is really um, y, so I'm going to write x equals cube root of x plus 2 minus 5. All right, uh, that should be a y plus 2. I'm going to add 5, so x plus 5 equals cube root of y plus 2. Let's get rid of the cube root and do a cube power. So I'm just writing this down. Cube equals y plus 2 is out now. So take away 2. So my answer will be this x plus 5 to the third minus 2. But this was f of x, so I write my inverse like this. f negative 1 of x is, and then I write it, x plus 5 to the third minus 2. Okay. All right. So over here, 5x minus 2, got to solve this if possible. So I take away 8. I got the square root of 5x minus 2 equals 4. Now I'm going to square both sides. So 5x minus 2 pops out, 16. I add 2, that's 18. Divide by 5, my answer is 18 over 5. All right, over here, they're both cube roots. So 2x minus 6 pops out, and negative x plus 3 pops out. Because really what I'm kind of doing is cubing it in my head, but I just know that they're equal to each other. So I'm going to add x over here, that gets me 3x. I'm going to add 6 to 3, it gets me 9. So x equals 3. Oh, let's see. I'm going to save this one till later. All right. Um, let's see. Add 22. So I got 2x to the fourth equals 162. Divide by 2 equals 81. So now I have to do the fourth root. So x equals plus or minus 3. The fourth root of 81 is 3. And you don't know because positive 3 and negative 3 are both, when you fourth power them, are both 81. So you have to put plus or minus. All right, let's take away 9. So I got the square root of 4 plus 3x equals negative 7. So just stop right here. This makes no sense. A square root can't be negative. So we are done. No solution. Okay. You have to stop yourself or else you can just keep going and think you're going to get an answer. All right, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I have x plus 2 over 5 to the 3 fourths equals 8. So I have to apply the reverse power. So I have to apply a 4 thirds. 4 thirds. So this is gone. I have x plus 2 over 5. But now I don't want to do 8 to the 4th. So the cube root of 8 is 2 and 2 to the 4th is 16. All right, so times 5. So x plus 2 is 80. Take away 2. So x is negative 78. All right, now this guy. I gotta put the five over, because I want this radical alone. And now this is x minus two. So now we're gonna square both sides to get rid of the radical. So four x minus 11 pops out, and I showed you a trick for this in class, otherwise you write it twice. But either way, when you FOIL it out, it comes out to x squared minus four x plus four. Okay, so let's bring everything over to the left. Take away four x, take away four x, add 11, add 11. So 0, I got x squared minus 8x plus 15. So what multiplies a 15 and makes 8 is 5 and 3. x minus 5, x minus 3. So my answers are 5 and 3. Okay, so I got to check them. So if I were going to put 3 in here, 3 plus 3 is 6. Um, 5 plus, this would be 12 minus 1, so the square root of 1. That seems to be true. 5 plus 1 is 6. So I'm good with 3. Um, let's try 5. So 5 plus 3 is 8 equals, let's see, 8 times 4 is 32. 32 minus 11. Oh, okay. oh wait a minute. I'm sorry, not 8. <laughs> uh, 5 is what I'm supposed to be trying. 20. 20 minus 11 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So over here I get 5 plus 3. Okay, 5 plus 3 is 8, so actually 3 and 5 are both okay. All right, so I'm going to do this last page here. Um, the graphs, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys are good at those. You, I mean, maybe I'll do them. Never mind, I'll just do them. All right, here, um, my transformations, i got to go left 2 and down 5. So left 2, down 5 is here. All right, cube root comes across and through there. Okay, domain is all real numbers, range is all real numbers. All right, square root, um, left one, up four, and there's a reflection over the x-axis, like facing down. 
All right, so left one up four. And instead of coming up, it's going to go down. All right, so domain from negative one over, so negative one to the right. Range is from four down, so it comes from negative infinity to four. All right, over here, a cubic function, right four and up five. Okay, right four, up five, and cubic, so it has to come up and cross over. All right, all real numbers, domain and range. Okay. All right, so find the equation of the inverse of this guy right here. So there's my domain and range, so I know my domain and range is going to switch. So my domain is going to be my range down here. My range is going to be my domain. Okay, so let's do it. I have um, basically this turns into x, negative radical y plus 1 plus 4. All right, let's take away 4. So x minus 4 equals negative square root of y plus 1. Let me get rid of the negative. So there's a couple ways to do this, um, but if I do this, I'm going to divide both sides by like a negative 1. Okay, so that's gone. So now I have the square root of y plus 1 equals x minus 4 over negative 1. So now I'm going to square both sides. Well, so y plus 1 is out. Now, when you square this, this is going to be squared, but when you square a negative 1, it just turns into a positive 1. So I'm going to not even write that. I'm just going to write x minus 4 squared. Okay? And take away 1. So my answer is x minus 4 squared and take away 1. Okay, so the correct notation, this was g of x, so I'm going to write g negative 1 of x is, and there's my answer down here, um, x minus 4 squared minus 1. All right, oh my goodness, put this in radical form, so I can tell it was a cube root. 125 must have been in here, because a cube root of 125 was 5 must have been a squared. The b, there was a number here, I divided it by 3, and I got 4. So it must have been 12. 12 over 3 is 4. And c, there was a number here, divided by 3, made 1. So it must have been 3. All right, now to the graphs. Super quick. All right, a line, let's see, starts at 2. My slope is negative 1, so it's going to go down here. Okay. A parabola, um, sideways, so the vertex is positive 4, positive 1. All right, and it's opening to the right. All right, absolute value, V-shape, up 3. Slope is negative 2, so it's going to go down 2 over 1. Dotted. All right, a less than, shade. All right, radical, move down four. So down four, normal square root, just comes up like this. Right two, cube root. So over here, right two, cube root comes from the side and goes up, okay? Uh, fourth power, so that's just a skinny parabola. So right three, up one, and draw a skinny parabola. All right, um, parabola, um, up four, upside down, parabola. It's along the y-axis, because that's y equals. Uh, circle, radius 2. So, 2, 2, 2, 2. There we go. And cubic function. So, left 4, and it comes up through here. Okay? Easy peasy. All right. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.